Our guest today is the wonderful Dr. Jeff Feynman. He's a founder and the creator of Holistic Actions. It's an online community that shows how powerfully holistic healthcare for animals and traditional veterinary medicine can work when they're used in tandem and not in opposition to each other. For Dr. Jeff, there's no gap between the energy of conventional sciences and the energy of spiritual truths. He combines his knowledge and a keen curiosity of molecular biology and veterinary medicine and holistic healing to help empower pet parents to create a better life for their animals. So welcome, Dr. Jeff. So glad you're here. Thank you, Lane. Thank you, and congratulations. I oh. didn't realize you were in this cohort. Thank awesome. you. I'm Thank you. Thank you. Tag the, now, I'm very honored. And it's a great group of folks. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you about our habits of going to traditional veterinarians. Many of us are animal guardians, pet parents. Um, and what are the situations of uh, the dogs get out of the car or the horse is colicking? And, and that's when immediate veterinary care is necessary. But it seems like there are so many times that we default to taking our animals to the vet when it may not be necessary, like maybe diarrhea or they're coughing or, you know, they're running a slight temperature. Why are we so quick to run to the vet when we see a symptom? Do you think it's like cultural conditioning or is it we've been trained just to think that's the best path to health for our animals? Yeah, yeah, I, I do think it's cultural conditioning very much so. And it stems from our disconnection from spirit from the energy of life and our fear of what a symptom might mean and only a power authority that we see in the veterinarian can really tell us what to do when the reality is our animals are always telling us what to do and they often will have symptoms which are connected, those symptoms are connected to everything going on around them because that's the way their bodies react to, to life. And there is a set of symptoms called beam behavior, energy, appetite, and mood. And if beam is high or 10, it's 100%. Team is usually eight or above and have a symptom. You don't need to run right to the vet. You maybe look at the whole situation and and figure out what might be going on. Obviously, you know, if it's an emergency situation, the first thing you may want to do is go right to your vet just to put things into context. Okay, thank you. Um... I'm one of those people that question, should I go or not go? And you mentioned symptoms. You approach uh, symptoms through a holistic and spiritual lens. Um, can you, and you've mentioned that many physical symptoms have spiritual basis. Can you talk a little bit about that? I missed the end of your question, but I think you're asking about the connection between spirit and symptoms. And for me, spirit is a form of energy, universal energy, universal life force. And symptoms are the body's expression of that energy balance in the body, in their bodies. And there is a direct connection, whether it is the spirit of who do you feel the love you're giving, the lifestyle they're living, or some clue their body is trying to give us um, that something is going on physiologically. So all a hundred percent of those symptoms are reflection of of spirit, and those symptoms may manifest externally, like you can see with the beam, or internally, you know, via blood. You can see it via blood tests or other diagnostic tests. And that's part of why you know, the two paradigms, you know, the, the more spiritual and holistic paradigm and the conventional mechanistic paradigms work so well together. 
but we need to know that they're able to work so well together mm -hmm. and not be driven by the fear of what we think might happen. Mm. Is there ever a time, conversely, um, can you hear me okay, Jeff? Okay. Um, so uh, one question I have is about your happiness protocol. Uh, I used it for my rescue from the Ukraine and it helped her immensely. Can you talk a bit about that and why it's so important? Sure, thank you for asking. Um, the happiness protocol, like a lot of the actions that we teach and practice are a form of biomimicry. So biomimicry is the body you know, using the nature to get the body or any part of nature to um, to come into alignment with universal spirit. And the way animals and plants and all beings are in nature is in joy, in love, in happiness. And we're very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. I love my work so much because our animals are an expression of that spirit, and all they want to do is be happy and loving, and you just have to let them do that. And the happiness protocol is just an expression of that. It is finding what they love the most, using that as a biomimicry framework to get their bodies back in balance. And that balance in molecular biology terms is kind of flow or flow or like the flow, a smooth flow of a river, um, energy flow in the body is that state where we're operating at our best. You know, we know flow as an offshoot of positive psychology. And flow and positive psychology actually go very well together. And the happiness protocol is just a way of uh, invoking that in our animals and that we can do it every day. And I'll give you a quick example. And I think you did, but I couldn't hear it. Um, uh, one of our students in Spain her, their dog was having a lot of GI symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, and the pain was maybe down a little bit. But what they did, the dog's happiest thing is what we call therapeutic sniff walk, um, which is just going out and walking with your dog, making sure the leash stays nice and loose, and letting him sniff around and engage and connect and when Anka came back, dog was pretty much back to normal. And the only action was the therapeutic sniff walk, which is, again, part of the happiness protocol. So for some dogs, as treats. For some cats, as general play. Um, it depends on the individual. Okay, I just switched mic, so I hope you can hear me better. Uh, sorry about That's that. Kind of um one thing I would like to ask, conversely, we talked about spiritual symptoms, physical symptoms having spiritual origins. Is there ever a time when a physical symptom has a physical origin that can be cured by spiritual means? Oh, great question. I think the answer to that would be it depends. If, you know, if my animal was hit by a car and he has pulmonary contusions, mm. Yes and no, in that if you visualize and realize that their body is destined to rebalance and that our understanding of spirit is, in this case, just listening, accepting, and trusting what's going on, then... Yeah, I think that we can always help them spiritually. But um, I think that, you know, the level of that depends on the symptom and the mm. situation. 
the severity and the chronic nature, if they're acute or not. Uh, one last question, which is a personal one. As a fan of the Krebs cycle, I was so, so glad to hear you say in a recent interview that mitochondrial energy is spiritual energy. And you quoted uh, Einstein as mass is energy as well. Uh, can you expound just a little bit more on that before we sign off? Sorry. <laughs> Poor, uh, it's going to end up boring people, but yes, uh, mitochondria are the little powerhouses that live in every cell of the body and are the only physiological way, it's the only way that we um, as scientists understand energy and energy as spirit and all those spiritual practices like love and awe and connection and the happiness protocol have been shown to increase mitochondrial metabolism, optimize flow, and improve performance in every way, in every disease studied. So, yeah, it all comes back to energy. Energy is everything. I love Love, energy. love life, energy. It's all, all that you need is love. Uh, thank the Beatles. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Jeff. And I want to mention to people here that if you go to Jeff's site, holisticactions.com, it is a wealth of information. And I mean treasure boxes, truckloads. Um, it is a member site, which means only members can ask questions, but anybody can go in there and search for answers in the forums. Also, his YouTube, the YouTube channel has 145 videos with some really smart people. So um, Dr. Jeff, I wanted to thank you. And also because so many times we have an adversarial view of holistic medicine and veterinary medicine. And I think the way you meld it together is makes it so approachable for people. Uh, if they have questions or if they lean one towards the other, um, you, you have a lovely meeting ground and you're doing great work. So thank you. And thank you for mm. what you do for the animals. Thank you, Lane. And for anyone that wants to start to learn the approach, I just put the uh, free one-on-one -on -one course um, in the chat. So that course is, again, free, and anyone can start Great. to learn how to upgrade the mitochondria. Great. Thank you. And thank you again for all you do. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you.